First of all, I would like to welcome overwhelmingly our honorable esteemed guest, Dr. Yahya from Switzerland. By the grace of Almighty Allah, we have the opportunity today to listen to this young man on very important subject and that is post-modernist discourses and Muslim communities. And that subject entitled by him was the issue of new postmodernist discourses on gender and race, another Western hegemony exploring its effects on Muslim communities. So without any further delay, because we all have uh, come here to uh, listen to our honorable guest, uh, Dr. Yahya, on very important subject. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa barik wa sallim wa nashkuru al-idara idara tawadha al-mahkiz al-mubarak alhamdulillah shukran khusus li l-ustaz doktor umair al-ladhi istikbalani amz alhamdulillah wa nas'aid an akum ma'akum Inshallah, astamiru bi lughat al-Inglisiya al-yawm. So I thank uh, the organizers of the event, especially the Sheikh, Dr. Umair Siddiqui, who invited me to take part to this event today, which wasn't my plan. I tried to specify that all the time because I couldn't have the due time to prepare as I wish. But still, I think that we have to accept invitations and that's a subject I would like to speak, especially here in Pakistan. I had the chance to address this issue in Indonesia as well in June and we'll speak a bit later of the core of the topic but first of all I want to respond to uh, Dr. Skoll about my own journey, but very shortly because, of course, talking about our, our self is not an easy task. We have many details and we don't know to which level to go in depth. But yes, as he mentioned, I became a Muslim at the age of 18, meaning that at that time I went to the mosque and I recited Shahadatin and with an Imam and he said, now you are Muslim. Alhamdulillah. But it was a long story that started when I was a child, actually, because when I was a child, I was, grew, I was raised as a Catholic by a non-religious family, or somehow religious, but not too much. And I had this belief in Allah by the fitra, by the education part of it, maybe, and by the fitra overall. But I didn't know about Islam. I believed in God and I believed that Jesus Isa was a perfect man, a guide, meaning a prophet. So when I went to the Catholic education system and we had class, different introduction, also we went to the church, I disagreed with many aspects, but I believed in God and I believe I love Jesus, I loved him and I still love him, obviously. And I felt I'm not a Christian. I felt, okay, Christianity is not very interesting, but I'm a believer. That's how I felt when I was a young child. And then, as a teenager, I began to be more curious about diverse cultures. I wanted to read about Buddhism, Taoism, Chinese religions, Hinduism, other things. So I tried to get books and to understand their views and I disagreed on some points, I agreed on some points. Finally, I got to know about Islam by music, by a rap song, because one of the men who used to be a famous rapper in France, he converted to Islam himself, then he totally changed his way of life. So I was 15 at that time, it impressed me and I began to have respect for Islam. Before that I never heard about Islam. For me, it was something I, I didn't know. I didn't have prejudice against Islam, but I didn't have any sympathy. I was totally neutral because I didn't know what it was about. So, because of this music, 
I it attracted my interest. I wanted to understand what Islam is about, so I began to read a few articles online. Internet was not developed as today. But then I found out, oh, Allah is God as I believed in Him. So, Sifatullah, I read, I accept totally, 100%, because this was my belief since my childhood. Then I heard about the prophets, saying that Allah sent all the prophets to mankind with the same message. And I found out in the list that there was also Isa salam, and there was Musa, Musa salam, or Ibrahim or other prophets. I already heard about them. So it was very easy for me to accept the message of Islam because I recognized Muhammad as the last prophet وسلم, not knowing about him but seeing he, he came with the same message. So I said, okay, I believe Islam is the best religion. I believe it's a good religion at the time, but I didn't want to become a Muslim. It took me three years to go to the mosque to talk to the Imam. The Imam, when he saw, he looked at me, he said, you're already a Muslim, you don't know. You, you have to recite Shahadatain. Then I said, I said, okay, why not? I didn't want to be a Muslim. But he said, if you believe that, you can recite. So I said, of course, because I believe in it, so I will recite. So I said, Ashhadu an la, la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu an Muhammad abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Then he said, now you are Muslim, formally. But it took me another year to start praying because I got a lot of issues. I wasn't sure about what I wanted. And when I started to pray five times a day, my life changed. I could stop my sins, many sins, many problems I had disappeared and I began to feel a taste for Islam. Then I began to go to mosques. At that time, I moved to France. I lived in Paris. Naibuhu is where you find the 80% of Muslims, but very few Islam. Many social problems, drugs, crime. But still, you have mosques. So I went to the, the masjid of different denominations. There was Jamat Tablir, there was uh, Ahbash, there was uh, Ikhwan, there was uh, Salafiyya. Many groups, Al-Adl al hassan from Morocco. So I went to all of them because I didn't know what was Islam. People at that time, they told me, you have to come with us, don't go with the other groups, they are sect, deviant groups. So everybody told me that I was a bit confused. But Alhamdulillah, that's the reason for which I started to want to study Islam. If it was too easy, I think I would just keep lazy with my daily prayers and not wanting to know more about it. But because they push me in contradiction, in speaking different things in the name of Islam, I had to think and to read, to speak to many people, uh, follow many groups, and I try to keep open. And then that's the reason for which I, I began to travel to Muslim countries also. When I travel to other countries, I found different expressions of Islam. But Alhamdulillah, with the time, the things got clearer and I tried to continue this journey till today. So about 20 years later, I try also to, inshallah, bi'adnillah, hoping to have an impact on peoples, especially in da'wah. I have my own way to understand da'wah because of my experience, which was very gradually was very slow, so now I try to be patient also when I want to accompany, to help or to advise people who is interested in Islam. At the same time, to come to my, my topic, I'm interested in the issues we face as Muslims or as humans in general. And before starting to speak about the topic, I, I just want to remind something that everybody knows here, but sometimes it's interesting to recall this because it's linked to epistemology and knowledge and how we deal with knowledge, how we can make sense of reality. As Muslims, we believe in revelation, wahi, fal-Qur'an, 
and the implementation of this wahi by the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, as the best example. So it's a very epistemological foundation. Knowledge comes from that for Muslims. It's important to recall that because if we study philosophy or sciences in uh, Western institutions, but no, they are not Western anymore, they are globalized, you don't find this epistemological foundation. It's very problematic because it's totally denied. So we have to remember what's the foundation of our knowledge. One part of is what we, call, what, what we can say Islam or scriptures, Quran and Sunnah, Wahi gives us indication, principles, norms. But on the other hand, we live in the in the specific context, a siyaq, which always change. The context we can call it also society. So for me, my approach to knowledge is the combination between both, between Islam in terms of Islamic teachings, which stay forever, and the reality of the context which, which always change, society. That's why we want to study Islam in society altogether. Mm.